All right, all right, all right, brothers and sisters this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've been listening to some good old Marvin Gaye back in the day. What's going on? What's going on? So, brothers and sisters, we're going to get right on with our program this morning. All praises due to the Son of Man, Master Farah Muhammad, that Jehovah came here July 4th, 1930. We thank you for raising up Moses in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Peace be upon him forevermore. And we thank Moses. So give the name Muhammad to one likened to himself, the prophet like Moses, in the person of the Honorable Silas Muhammad. We give great honor to the 24 black Islamic scientists, the ones who control this earth, the hearts of all men, until the coming of that son of man, that Jehovah, in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, this morning you can support the Honorable Silas Muhammad and the Afro-descendant nation. Please do so. Make all checks and money all payable to the Lost Foundation of Islam, Incorporated, P.O. Box 667, Red Oak, Georgia, 30272. Let's make all checks and money orders payable to the Lost Foundation of Islam, Incorporated, P.O. Box 667, Red Oak, Georgia, 30272. And brothers and sisters, get ready for Savior's Day 2023 next month. That's right. Now, come on down to Atlanta, G.A., at Muhammad's Temple of Islam, 34 to Camerton Road, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. Doors open at 1 p.m. And the keynote speaker will be the prophet like Moses. That's right now. The prophet like Moses will be the keynote speaker at Savior's Day 2023 in Atlanta, Georgia, at Muhammad's Temple of Islam, 34 to Camerton Road, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. Doors open at 1 p.m. PM, that keynote speaker. Now, I'm going to give you who he is. He is the Honorable Silas Muhammad, but he is that prophet like Moses. And brothers and sisters, we're going to get into part two now of Abraham and Ishmael prayer for a messenger to be raised after Moses and after the death of Moses to go after his seed because his seed went astray, as I said, when Wallace took over the nation of Islam and destroyed it along with Ramadan and everything else, it took a second messenger now. Understand me here now. I'm going to bring on Brother Minister in a minute. We are talking about two messengers that is to come to the children of Israel, the black slaves in the United States of America that spent the 400 years of plantation slavery here to the white Egyptians. You call them Europeans. The book called the Egypt Land, and that's what we call it. Egypt Land, America now. You must understand this. This is what the fight is all about with you, black man, woman, and child. They, want, they do not want you to acknowledge now. You are their chosen people now. And Almighty God Allah himself has made his presence known in the, the name of Jehovah, as written in the book, that son of man who came here July 4th, 1930. And then within that, brothers and sisters, there was a Moses and there's a prophet like Moses. That's to be raised, as the book says, one coming right out the another. Moses is going to pass away. Then the prophet like Moses is going to come on the scene. And let me say this before I bring on my brother minister. As I told you all, Malina Muhammad Ali, you all know who he is. He said that Muhammad of 1,400 years ago was the prophet like Moses. And he states it in his footnotes that Muhammad of 1,400 years ago came 2,000 years or so after a Moses of 4,000 years ago. And he just was just as ignorant as all the rest of them scholars because they were trying to hide the truth. And what that truth, you, the black man, woman, and child, now, since the coming of that Jehovah, that son of man, Master Farad Muhammad, he chose you now, you now, you, the black slaves, ex-slave descendant, you now has been chosen above all of the people of the planet Earth for your 400 years of plantation slavery. This was done by the coming of the son of man, Master Farad Muhammad. There's no getting around that. This is why, as I said, the Arabs now, and all of them, the imams, historians, scholars, scientists, 
from the white world to the Arab world want you now to subscribe to their teachings, not to the teachings of Master Farad Muhammad, who came here, your God, if you accept him to be your God. But he is the God now of the children of Israel. He is that God now that raised up Moses, the first Moses, and the person the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is that God now that raised up the second Moses, the prophet like Moses, as the book says, as the Quran says, the prophet like Moses, and the person the honorable Silas Muhammad. Because there was a need. As the Quran said, there was a need for a prophet like Moses. Now you can go in there now. As I said, Surah 28, section 5, 43 to 48. You can read there for yourself. A prophet like Moses is coming to the black slave children to be raised up after the death of Moses. So in the further ado, I'm going to shut this down and bring on Minister Shakur because he has a lot of information he, he wants to share with you because this is part two now of part one that we did last month in Ramadan. This is the part two of Abraham and Ishmael's prayer for a messenger to be raised to save them from themselves because they will be led astray. And you can go into Silver 2, Verse 125 to 129, you can read that for yourself. And you can read in there the footnotes of Malayna Muhammad Ali when he's in there trying to tell you that this is Muhammad of 1,400 years ago, which he lied upon, just like all the rest of the Arabs lied upon it, just like the Christians, the white Christian theologians lied upon that I was a Moses 4,000 years ago. You, the black man, had nothing to do with the book. The book has nothing to do with you, black man. This is the lie that all of the preachers tell you and have been teaching you for the last 4,000 years under the rulership of the Caucasian race. So let me bring on Minister Shakur. He is the minister here in the city of Baltimore for the Lost Foundation of Islam and the Honorable Silas Muhammad. So I'm going to turn this mic over to him. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Captain Shabazz. In the name of Allah, Master Farad Muhammad, the beneficent, the most merciful God who came to America July 4th, 1930, the Son of Man. And in loving memory of Moses, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we thank the Honorable Silas Muhammad, the prophet like Moses, for his courageous stand against Wallace D. Muhammad, August 21st, 1977. And in recognition of our queen, Mishaki Muhammad, assalamu alaikum. Last month, at the end of my talk, I began part one of Who is the Prophet Like Moses? Today I will give you part two. I don't normally title my talk when I speak here on Sundays. However, I have a title for this talk today. Establishing the prophet like Moses in the earth. This talk today will benefit the followers of Messenger Elijah Muhammad, the followers of Minister Farrakhan, my Israelite brothers and sisters, my Orthodox Muslim brothers and sisters, and lastly but not least, the Christian, my Christian brothers and sisters. The majority of this teaching today will be spiritual. So brothers and sisters, put on your spiritual caps or hats. Don't get emotional, get holy. I mean, don't get emotional and don't get holy, but get understanding. Last month I said that Moses, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, spoke to us in 1933, and in 1933 and a half, Allah left us in the person 
of Master Farad Muhammad. The prophecy says that God spoke to Moses as a man speaketh to his friend. Exodus 33, 11. Did he speak to God face to face? Yes. Part page 17, pardon me, message to the black man. Paragraph 5. I asked him, who are you and what is your name? He said, I am the one that the whole world has been expecting for the past 2,000 years. I said to him again, what is your name? He said, my name is Makti. I am God. I came to guide you into the right path that you may be successful and see the hereafter. Exodus chapter 6 of the Bible says, he appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by the name of Jehovah was I not known. On page 16, a message to the black man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Moses told us his proper name, Allah, where he came from, the holy city of Macarabia, and when he came, 1930. Also on the same page, he gave us his personal name, Wallace D. Muhammad, pardon me, Wallace Farad, Wallace D. Farad. In the third year, 1933, he signed it W.F. Muhammad which stands for Wallace Farad Muhammad. Now that it has been ascertained to who Moses and Moses' God was, let's move on to verifying and magnifying the Honorable Silas Muhammad, Joshua, the prophet like Moses, and make him known in the earth. To do that, I will start in the book of Deuteronomy where Moses died in Moab, symbolic America. Ex Deuteronomy 34.5. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad passed away February 25th, 1975. Moses and Joshua, the prophet like Moses, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him, Deuteronomy 34, 9. My interpretation of that is in 1966, when living with Moses in Chicago at his home, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told him, Silas Abu Bakr, the prophet like Moses, you are more like me than any of my sons take my name, Muhammad. I would call that more than laying his hands on him. That's an honor to be bestowed on any man the name Muhammad. Praiseworthy, worthy to be praised. Especially when Silas Abu Bakr had not begun to do his work of resurrecting the nation of Islam. Moses, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, knew that God would raise up a prophet after him. He left clues and hints in his writings and interviews, which we didn't get it, but the prophet like him got it, the Honorable Silas Muhammad. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Moses told us it's right there in prophecy. Deuteronomy 18, 15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee, unto us, a prophet from a midst of thee, from among us, of thy brethren, like unto me, Elijah. Unto him ye shall hearken, ye shall listen. There was no Moses 4,000 years ago that liberated a people from Pharaoh in Egypt. There was a Moses Musa who went into the caves and hillsides of Europe to civilize the white man, the devil. After we ran them out of Mecca, Arabia, the Holy Land. Evidenced by a devil in his book, The Outline of History, page 256, second paragraph. H.G. Wells writes, of the life and career of Moses, there are no Egyptian records at all. There is no account of any plagues of Egypt or any pharaoh who was drawn in the Red Sea. Further evidence, listen to what he writes on the same page, last paragraph. The discovery of a clay tablet written by the Egyptian governors of a city in Canaan to Pharaoh Amenophis IV, who came in the 18th dynasty, before Ramesses II mentioning the Hebrews by name, declaring that they are overrunning Canaan. Now, 
if the Hebrews were conquering Canaan in the time of the 18th dynasty, they could not have been made captive and oppressed before they conquered Canaan by Ramesses II of the 19th dynasty. The Christian scholars and the Arabs got it wrong. Moses Musa, 4,000 years ago, wrote the first five books of the Bible. What he wrote was prehistory prophecy to let us know that there is a man that's going to come to us named Moses. He is going to civilize us because we have lost complete knowledge of self. As a white man, the devil lost knowledge of himself in the caves and hillsides of Europe. The only thing we allowed him to keep was the language, Arabic. Unlike Moses, Musa, that went into Europe 4,000 years ago, who didn't have a brother or an aider, the Moses that was prophesied to come to us would have a brother, Aaron. Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Exodus 4, 14. The Holy Quran says it like this. And we gave him out of our mercy Aaron, a prophet. Holy Quran, Surah 19, verse 53. And give me an aider from my family, Aaron, my brother. Add to my strength by him and make him share my task. Holy Quran, Surah 20, 29 through 32. In Deuteronomy 18, 18, God Allah telling Moses, Elijah, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, from among the ex-slaves, the Negroes, like unto thee, Elijah, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he, Silas, Joshua, the prophet like Moses, shall speak unto them, the ex-slaves, all that I command him. Prophecy refers to the foretelling or predicting of future events. So it would be suffice to say that Deuteronomy 18.15, Deuteronomy 18.18, and Holy Quran Surah 20, 25 through 32 is prophecy. And they're speaking of a future Moses, a future prophet like Moses, and a future Aaron that was to come. Did God raise up a prophet like Moses? Yes, he did. Save your Silas Muhammad. The CEO of the Lost Foundation of Islam teaches that Moses, Elijah Muhammad, peace be upon him, the last messenger of God, Allah, did not take the people into the promised land. This task was left up to the young man named Joshua. He is the faithful servant of Moses, Deuteronomy 34.9. After the death of Moses, it was Joshua who stood to defend the name of Moses. He went to war against the enemies of Moses. The prophecy reads, and there was war in heaven, war in the nation of Islam. The prophet like Moses, Joshua, and his angels fought against the dragon, a dragon is also a beast. Here I'm not talking about an animal. I'm talking about a human being with characteristics of beast-like nature. Evil doesn't care about anybody or anything. Also, I'm not talking about the symbolic beast or a dragon in the book of Revelation, the devil, the white man. I'm talking about the first beast that rose up out of the nation of Islam in 1975. A black man who blasphemed the name of God, Allah, Master Farad Muhammad. 
I'm talking about Wallace D. Muhammad, Revelation 13, 1, 4, and 6. The Honorable Silas Muhammad, Michael, was the only one able to make war with him, wounding him, and the second beast, Minister Farrakhan, healed his wounds. Don't get emotional. Don't get holy. Get understanding. Now the prophecy of the second beast rising up out of the nation of Islam, who had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He demonstrated all the powers of the first beast and called the followers of Moses, Elijah, to worship the first beast, Wallace D. Muhammad. Revelation 13, 11, and 12. Another black man, Minister Farrakhan, the false prophet, Aaron, the second beast, has taken up where the first beast, Wallace D. Muhammad, has left off. He has led his followers to Scientology and occult religion, Orthodox Islam, and Christianity, which is the belief that dead people can come back to life Physically, after the, after, pardon me, physically, the same thing the Pope of Rome teaches. Now, the prophet like Moses, Michael, Joshua, the Honorable Silas Muhammad, is at war again, spiritual war, and his ministers against the second beast, who is very cunning and deceitful. And there was war in heaven the nation of Islam, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, beast, and the dragon fought against his angels, and the dragon, beast, prevailed not. Revelation 12, 7 and 8. Don't get emotional, don't get holy, get understanding. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Moses passed away February 25th, 1975. Symbolic to him going up into the mountain in prophecy. And when he returned, at first the people nor Aaron recognized him, the prophet like Moses. Yet he was their liberator and the one to lead them into the promised land. Why didn't they recognize him? The prophecy says his face was shining as he beckoned or called to the congregation. They didn't recognize him because the Moses that went up into the mountain was not the Moses that came back down the mountain. The prophet like Moses, Silas Muhammad, came to us or back to us to the nation of Islam, August 21st, 1977. The false prophet, Aaron, Minister Farrakhan should be making atonement once a year for his disbelief in God Allah, Master Farad Muhammad, Exodus 30.10. Aaron should atone for himself and his priesthood, Leviticus 9.7, 16.6-11. Don't get emotional, don't get holy, get understanding. Now I have some spiritual some spiritual references of the prophet like Moses. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Jeremiah 23 and 3. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, verse 6. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. 
Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 17. For I will take you from among the heathens and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Ezekiel 36, verse 24. Did not save your Silas Muhammad. Bring 19 heads of state, 250 million of our brothers and sisters together. Yes, it was in 2005 in Peru when our new political identity began to shape the minds of the ex-slave descendants. We are Afro-descendants. I beheld till the throne was cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the wool, pardon me, like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire, Daniel 7, 9. Said then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, 2 Corinthians 3.12. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face. Now, brothers and sisters, I told you to put your spiritual caps on or hats. That veil is not a physical veil. Not like the Arab women wear. It's a spiritual veil that you cannot see. I will explain later on. That the, let me read that again. See then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. 2 Corinthians 3.12 And not as Moses which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel, the ex-slave children, the so-called Negro, could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. 2 Corinthians 3.13 But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil Untaken away. Unto what day? Unto January 15, 2023. That veil is still upon their face. 2 Corinthians 3.14 But their minds were blinded. Again. Unto this day remain as the same veil untaken away. In the reading of the Old Testament, which the veil is done away in Christ. Who is the Christ? He is the first begotten of the dead. The Honorable Silas Muhammad is the first to rise for the second resurrection. 2 Corinthians 3.14 But even unto this day when Moses is read, when Elijah is read, the veil is upon their heart, 2 Corinthians 3.15. Nevertheless, I want you all to listen to this one. Nevertheless, when it, their heart, shall turn to the Lord, Silas, Muhammad, the veil shall be taken away, 2 Corinthians 3.16. So you followers out there, Minister Farrakhan, or whomever, Turn your heart and your mind to the Honorable Silas Muhammad, and that veil shall be lifted from your heart, from your eyes. And Jesus Christ, Silas Muhammad, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood, Revelation 1.5. His head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, Revelation 1.4. And his feet were like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice like as the sound of many waters, Revelation 1.15. Hair like wool, eyes as a flame of fire, Feet as if burned in a furnace. Does that describe the man 
that you have hanging on your walls, in your homes, and your churches. Holy Quran, Surah 7, verse 150 to 51. Holy Quran, Surah 20, 86, 92, 93, 95, and 97. Holy Quran 26, 10 through 16. Those are more spiritual references of the prophet like Moses. Our Lord and raise up in them a messenger from among them who shall recite to them thy messages and teach them the book and the wisdom and purify them. Surely thou art the mighty, the wise. Holy Quran, Surah 2, 129. Now I want you all to listen to this footnote here very carefully. Footnote 172, translated by Milani Muhammad Ali. The messenger had appeared, but the great task of teaching the book, the Bible, and the wisdom to the progeny the descendants of Ishmael, the Arabs, is still greater, is still, and the still greater task, pardon me, of purifying them of evil, cleaning them of evil, had yet to be performed. I want to read that again. The messenger had appeared, but the great task of teaching the book and the wisdom too the progeny, the descendants of Ishmael, the Arabs, and the still greater task of purifying them of evil had yet to be performed. And its mention at this time was therefore prophetical. I want you to keep that word in your mind. Number one, the Arabs are not Ishmael's seed. Number two, this messenger could not be Muhammad of 1400 years ago because the greater task of purifying them did not happen at that time because it was purely prophetical. It says it right there in the first sentence. It was to occur in the future. Number three, this messenger slash holy prophet that is mentioned here is the prophet like Moses, Savior Silas Muhammad. Lastly, I want to finish here because of my time. I will give you part three of the prophet like Moses next month. But I do want to give you this last part here of part two. Message to the black man, page 56, page 57. The name of God is Muhammad. Minister Farrakhan does not have the name Muhammad. Don't get emotional. Don't get holy. Get understanding. And our Savior has arrived, page 113. A new government is mentioned five times as the God of truth, justice, and righteousness. Allah is going to be the ruler or creator of the new government slash kingdom of God. Savior Silas Muhammad. My name is Minister Shakur. My email address is Rahim Shakur 49 at gmail.com. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you all. Okay, thank you, Brother Minister, for that information. Um, there will be a part three, you said? Yes, sir. Okay, there will be a part three, brothers and sisters, next month on February the 20th. So look out for us for next month. And before we close this out, brothers and sisters, let's take a look at what is being said here because this is about the old world now understand what's going on here this is about the old world that old world that was sealed up 
upon the death of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That old world that came to an end, as taught to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and now by the Honorable Silas Muhammad in 1914, and was extended by 60 years until 1974. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad died February 25, 1975. Within that process, you were to wander in the wilderness of America so that you will come to the understanding of the Book of Prophecy, just who you are, who the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was to you, who Master Farad Muhammad was, and you are the chosen now of God, Allah. And there were two messengers, as the book says, there were two Moses that had to come. Understand this now. Both Moses, Moses, the first Moses, and the prophet like Moses, both of whom are messengers. Right. Understand this now. We are talking about a second messenger now. Go back now and read Message to the Black Man, page 250, paragraph 1. Whereas... The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told you, I am the first and last messenger. Meaning, he was the first messenger raised from the seed of Ishmael. And he was the last messenger concealing the old world in 1975 when he passed away. Right. And there was a need now for a second messenger given the title as the prophet like Moses. That's what is at stake here. That was need to be established to you now, black man, woman, and child, and especially you, the Muslim followers of Moses now, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, That's right. sympathizers, supporters, you're dealing with now, when you look at the Honorable Silas Muhammad, you're looking at a second messenger, as the book told you, a prophet like Moses. Prophet like Moses. Which was needed for you to come now, to help you, to guide you, to liberate you physically from a superior race, which is the Caucasian race. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote that now in Message to the Black Man. I want you to go back, and I know you Muslim had read it, 157, message to the black man, page 157, 156, where the Amal Elijah Muhammad is explaining to the Arabs about Muhammad of 14 years ago is not that messenger. He's telling Malina Muhammad Ali and his followers, the scholars, the white scientists, historians, all of them, this is happening now right here in the United States of America. That's right. And after me, as he said in 1964, when he gave the interview to Buzz Anderson, the man coming after me. It is that man. Now go back and listen to it. His interview he did with Buzz Anderson in 1964, when he said that Master Farah Muhammad told me, I am to fulfill two-thirds of the Holy Quran. That's what he said. And the other one-third is for the man coming after him. Who is that man coming after him? It is the prophet like Moses. Moses. Theology of time. Go to page 193, last paragraph. When Elijah is explaining to you that he is that Moses in the flesh and blood. And Master Fuha Muhammad is that Jehovah. That's right. Go and read it for yourself. Theology of Time, page 193, message to the black man. Oh, excuse me. Theology of Time, page 193. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to have to close this out and wrap this up because we're going to do a part three on this. So we want you to understand this, what you're dealing with now. You're dealing with today a second messenger had to come on the scene. And that second messenger has the title as the prophet like, like Moses. That's right. I am Brother Shabazz, along with my co-host, Minister Shakur. We'll see you February the 20th 
of next month. Peace, love, and soul at Al's ways. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.